Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the show, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, I don't know where you guys are at, but here it is raining absolute cats and dogs. And we're in a flash flood warning right now. Um, and for that reason, our guests, the ladies of Femme Fatale, will not be joining us this evening. But uh, we will get them on the show to make up for tonight. But the weather is just, it's... It's horrible. It's been raining all day. Now the streets are starting to flood. So what we're going to do instead is have a little mini version of the Libra Lounge this evening. So you'll get to Kiki with myself and producer James. Today's show is brought to you by the ladies of Femme Fatale. Please don't forget, go to their Facebook page and look at their events because this Saturday, the 27th, beginning at 9.30 a.m., they are hosting a Wicked Workout Open Gym at Femme Fatale. Um, the trainers are going to have different workouts. Uh, they're going to be giving away prizes. There's going to be a Halloween contest. And if you sign up on Saturday, there's zero initiation fee. So you can't beat this. You get a chance to meet all the ladies of Femme Fatale, get your workout on, win some prizes, and you get to sign up. Remember, when you sign up, it is for the gym membership. And that way you can save. Um, there will be no initiation fee. So is there anything else, Producer James? No, I think that's it for now. So we're going to go right into The Gap. We know she has a really big mouth, which sounds kind of dirty, and that's probably true too. Let's gossip The Gap with Keisha. So um, I'm, I'm on pins and needles right at this very moment because um, our cat just walked into the studio and if you guys recall, when Kathy Lewis was on our show, he went completely ape shit in the studio. He was trying to tear up the set. So I don't know what he's planning on doing this evening. We call him Solo Negro because he just kind of does whatever it, whatever it is that he wants to do. So hopefully Liam will be chilling. So, um, oh my God. <laughs> So uh, tonight for the gab, we're going to be talking about a couple of things, but one of the hot topics right now is Vogue magazine has Kendall Jenner on the cover and many are saying that she's culturally appropriating because it appears as though, and there's a picture right there, you can see it, that she has an Afro. So we have an expert here at home who knows all about cultural appropriation and we're going to let her tell us exactly what it is. It's actually my 16 year old daughter, Skylar, who's going to um, let us know what cultural appropriation is. Hello. Hi. Okay. So do you want to tell the audience what is the definition of cultural appropriation? Cause I know you're, you, 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 you every time I try to do something cute, when I dress up in Indian garb, you're like, you're culturally appropriating. So tell everyone what it is, because we're old. Okay, well, first off, I tell you, because I don't want people coming for you, because then I'm going to have to physically fight them. Thank you so Second much. All, okay. Uh, cultural appropriation is pretty much like, there's a certain aspect of one culture, and somebody from another culture um, does that same thing, but mm. they get praise for it, while the uh, original culture gets like, ostracized for it okay james yeah. is that the correct is that right i have no idea because this is something that's been made up in the last few months i think no it's been here for a while but we just hear about it a lot and we it's funny because we hear about it a lot with the kardashian family so, yeah so the kardashians, they, they stay doing stuff that's part of black culture and then like kim k she like it was a whole quote unquote trend, like, oh, boxer braids, but it was literally just like, what was it? It was pretty much just cornrows. Right. But she got called beautiful. It was like a whole new trend, but then black girls were cornrows, and it's like, ew, what are you doing? You're ghetto. Okay. Thank you so much, Skylar, for breaking it down for us, the old folk over here. You're welcome. You sounded you. You sound real educated and white. Good job. Oh, thank you. You're so thank welcome. You. Wait, now you're culture appropriating from white people. Bye. I, uh, Southern Bell. Yeah, bye. whatever. Bye. Okay, so here on the screen, you can see, here's the, the photo of Kendall Jenner. And to me, personally, 
I don't consider this to be cultural appropriation. It, it, it actually looks like a 1970s Jewish woman with a bad perm. If, if, and maybe that's culturally appropriating too, but people are saying that she's wearing an Afro and instead of having Kendall put on a wig that rep- that resembles a, uh, an Afro, they should have just gotten a black or Latina model who really does have natural hair like that to take this photo for Vogue. What but do you I, think? But I don't understand how, what makes that black hair? I mean, it, it, to, I mean, to, to me, it doesn't it, even look like a fro. It looks like a really bad perm that someone attempted to comb out. But people are saying that, no, I mean, she's not dressed in like traditional African garb or anything like that. You know, I could see if she were, you know, dressed up like she was part of the Zulu tribe. But the girl has on a, a, a wig and it looks, is that, I'm trying to see her top. That looks like something from the 1920s. I mean, if that was Winona Ryder 20 years ago who had hairstyles like that every now and then, this would not be an issue whatsoever. When 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 did different ethnicities get to grab and say that is purely us, no one else can ever have that style, that kind of hair, that right. aesthetic, period? I think part of the problem is this, which I and I do agree with this. It is when a certain culture has been doing things forever and always and then you have someone usually it's a person who is caucasian who mimics what the other culture has done and then it becomes oh it's so great it's so wonderful it's beautiful but when that certain culture has been doing that it's just like oh that's just what they do but when someone outside of the culture does it they're you know they get praised for it so it's kind of like it's right in the fist because i'm like isn't that a good thing in a way to embrace different cultures well, isn't that part of uh, part of the allure of, of art? I mean, to 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 challenge ideas of things, to, yeah. to make make you think about what you define as aesthetic or right. anything else. Because to me, uh, what is the lady's name who pretended like she was black and she was the president of the NAACP? Rachel Dozel. Rachel Dozel. Now that bitch was culturally appropriating. I mean, she completely identified only with the black culture and did everything that she could to make it look like she was a legitimate light skin member of the African-American clan. To me, that's cultural appropriation. I think this is art. It's, it's a fashion magazine. It's all about fashion and fashion is always outside of the box. I personally think that this is a very beautiful picture of Kendall Jenner. I like it. I think that she falls underneath the Kardashian curse. That's cursed with the K. <laughs> mm. um, I guess nobody got it. Yeah. Uh, I think she falls underneath the Kardashian curse because everything they do is so heavily scrutinized just because the majority of them are famous just for being who they are. Yeah, I think it's still kind of ironic that, um, especially today, we talk about how people identify being mm-hmm. so critical like i identify as a man or a woman or something like that right so taking that same thought process is it's my truth i am what i identify as right why would we get mad at rachel dozal now for identifying a way like that but we praise and and glorify uh, uh caitlin jenner for identifying as a woman something now. she's different well i mean that's a whole nother show because we could talk for hours days even about um you know what people are able to how they're able to identify with whatever they want to identify with according to the day the day the month the hour whatever but in this case with Kendall Jenner I'm gonna have to say no I don't think it's cultural appropriation at all I don't think that she's trying to portray a black woman at all and here's the thing it black people are not the only culture that have curly hair or afros or things like that there's several different cultures that have that i i think that people really are reaching pretty far with this one 
Vogue magazine is, they don't give two shits about what we're saying about them culturally appropriating. And I keep saying that word because I can finally say it because I keep always want to say opportunity, cultural opportunity is that appropriation. So that's what I think about Kendall Jenner and her cover of Vogue and everyone knows I'm always right. So that's what we're going to go with. Okay. Um, Ooh. Ooh, so we had some major, major, major team mom drama over the weekend. Uh, Janelle Evans, who's married to that douchebag, David, who just, he looks crazy to me. Everything about him says, I like to beat up women and kick puppies. That's, that's just how he looks to me. He got kicked off of the show because he was talking about gay and trans people. So, uh, you know, Janelle's mom has said for a long time that she... Fears for the kids. She fears for Janelle because David just, something's not right upstairs. And over the weekend, uh, the police and an ambulance was all actually called out to Janelle's place because of a 911 phone call. Um, now, when they did get there, uh, when the police did get there, um, of course, David said it was nothing. It was just a misunderstanding. Janelle did not take the ambulance to the hospital, but she did later go on. And I, I, I promise you that day I said, watch it. She's going to come back and release something saying that she fell. And I be damned if she did not say everything's great. We were spending quality time together. I just fell. That is classic batter woman terminology right there. But then the 911 phone call was released and it is Janelle crying in hysterics saying that David hit her and that she thought that he broke her collarbone. That that's a mighty, that's a mighty fall right there. Yeah. I'm, I really would like both of them to get beaten up in certain ways. Oh yeah. Cause Janelle is an ass hat, but Janelle. yeah, Janelle, oh, she's God. something else. But I think that we finally have some proof of what everyone who is a fan of the show has been thinking the whole time about this guy, David here, 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 here's the thing that, that's just, it's just crazy to me. So Janelle was engaged to, um, gosh, she's had so many guys on the show. I don't know if anyone who watches it remembers this, but that she's had a lot of dicks since the beginning, since, since 16 and pregnant, but she was dating, engaged to a guy named Cortland who was arrested and Cortland, Cortland and David were actually cellmates cellmates Cortland would tell David all about Janelle so as soon as David got released guess where he went he went straight to Janelle's house and he was like hey because <laughs> this is the greatest pickup line ever I was cellmates with your ex-fiance and in true Janelle fashion she was like I guess that was enough she said enter my home and enter my vagina I like you you're my type of dude so as much as I can't stand Janelle this is very concerning because they've got like 20 kids over there CPS is I mean I don't even want to know what their rap sheet with CPS is uh David has he's here's something else that we didn't know David has not only the daughter that we sometimes see I think her name is Marissa but he has a son that's within the, the, the age, I think the little boy's like two or three that he actually cannot have any kind of a relationship with because he was so abusive to the little boy's mom while she was pregnant. I do not know. I do not understand why Janelle is just a magnet for trash. Just, she's an okay looking girl. She looks kind of like an elf by the face, but she's got team mom money. So she's doing okay. She's constantly talking about the the land, their land, there's probably dead bodies somewhere on that land that she always talks about, but I hope she gets it together. Um, I don't, well, <laughs> I hope she leaves this guy before someone gets hurt. I, I would really feel bad if one of the kids were to get hurt because he's already been accused by Janelle's other ex, uh, fiance, who is the dad of Kaiser, um, of putting his hands on him. So, you know, I, 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 I don't know. It looks bad. It smells bad. I, I don't think it's going to end well at all. I think that this was 
a bit, it needed to be an eye opener for Janelle, but it's so hard for women to get out of abusive relationships for some odd reason. But to me, it seems like it should be a little bit easier for her considering that she's in the public eye so much. So I'm sure there's like, you know, cause they love getting their support from social media. Well, it's also hard to leave abusive relationship when you're not trying to. Yeah. I don't think she's made any attempts. I think that Janelle is a drama queen and it doesn't matter what form the drama comes in, uh, whether it's, hey, I'm a heroin addict. Hey, I'm fighting with my mom, Barbara. Hey, I'm not going to film for EMTV. Hey, my husband beat me up. She doesn't care. She just likes the attention, good, bad, or indifferent. As long as the attention is on Janelle, that is what she wants. But this is a dangerous situation. It's not going to end well. I've spoken. So... <laughs> Um, hopefully she gets it together. I, you know, it would be to me, I would have a lot of respect for MTV if they made it mandatory for her to get some kind of counseling or to do something about acknowledging what's going on between she and David since, you know, they've been with her since she was 16 and pregnant. I think it's pretty clear that this guy's abusive. Plus he's already been kicked off of the show. Well, here's the thing. Aren't they there 24 hours a day film filming? I mean, well, it, it, well they yeah. don't film David at all anymore. No, but my point is they're they're there all the time. Right. So to me, if they've seen something, say something. But they I'm won't. sure they have. No, I, I, I you know I, what? I will it, say that. It's for ratings. Come on. I think a lot of it is, for, well, of course, it's a television show, but I'm sure those producers, because they're pretty close with their cast members. I think the producers are probably said something, but hey, when stuff like this happens, like this weekend, this incident, that just makes people want to tune in to Team Mom even more to kind of say, oh, you know, what's this story all about? Who are these people? Did he really break her collarbone? It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. So anyway, moving right along. Next up is uh, ex-football player Ray Knuth. Is it Knuth or Caruth? Caruth. Caruth. Not Knuth. Not like a canoe. Caruth has been released from prison. Now, if you, uh, everyone remembers the story of Ray Caruth because every single crime show has redid the story. So uh, it's been all over the ID channel. It's been on Oxygen. Um, I think they may have, I'm sure there's been some kind of a, movie that may have been based on the story. So James, if you can give us a quick rundown of what happened with Mr. Ray Carruth. So, and I'm getting this off of Wikipedia. So, uh, cheating ass. I don't know anything about the guy. So he was drafted in the first round in the 97 NFL draft to the Panthers spent three seasons with the team in 2001. He was found guilty of conspiring to murder his then girlfriend, Cherica, Cherica, Cherica Adams who was pregnant with his child. Um, he served 18 years of an 18 to 24 month sentence at the, uh, at, in at the correction facility in North Carolina and was released October 22nd, 2018. So he didn't get out early. His sentence was 18 to 24 years. So, in a way, you could say, and I would say, he's he's served his sentence. Completely. No, and, and and yes, he has most he has served his sentence. But now that he has been released, he now is saying that he wants to have a relationship with the child that ultimately he tried to kill when he killed the child's mother because she was still pregnant with him, and because of the trauma from um, the mom and the lack of oxygen, his son is mentally retarded. So my thing is, should the courts allow him to be a part of this child's life? Because technically he tried to kill the child. Because if you go back to like the Scott Peterson case, the Lacey Peterson case, you know, he got, um, when he went on trial, it was for double murder because it's the mom and the infant. So here it is. There was an attempted murder on this little boy who now has had to go through life with, with issues because of what Ray did. I don't think he should have any access to that child at all. I don't know. It's uh. so I've been, I've been looking here to try and see if there's anything that talked about what he actually did. Um, as far as the murder. Well, no, there was no murder. There was no murder. He was he was arrested. He was uh, convicted of of a conspiracy to commit murder. So but the girl's dead. No, the girl's alive. 
Well, oh, she, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, the the woman died. She fell into a coma after she went into the hospital. Right. So, uh, so it's because of what he did that the mom died, and now the child is mentally challenged due to what he he went to jail for murder. I I I think now, that look, it wasn't for murder. It was conspiring to murder. They couldn't prove that he killed her. Okay. She walked into the hot. She went to the hospital, and then she went into a coma. They could never prove that. What they're saying is, is that she went into a coma and then she died. And then as a result, the they baby had survived, to have a, but right. they had to have a C-section, but the baby had, had lost uh, too much air. oxygen. And yeah, right. But it doesn't say that that was because of anything he did. Oh, sh- whatever. It's because of what he did to the mom. He tried to kill the mom. He didn't want to be with her. He didn't want a baby. Now he's out of prison and saying that he wants to be a dad. Oh. So okay, so so the person that actually, I'm sorry, so the person that actually shot the mother. All right, so somebody else shot the mother. Yes, so he did. Named, I, uh, yes, yeah, somebody named uh, Brett uh, Van Brett Watkins shot her. The okay, I, I see now. They said that Caruth hired him yes. to do so. So that's why he was found guilty of conspiracy. He didn't actually commit the crime, but yeah. he he conspired with someone, right. hired someone to off his then girlfriend and his unborn son. Yeah. Like to me, I honestly feel like he's only saying that he wants to have a relationship with his son to try to clean up whatever he can of his image in a way. Because look, here's the thing. Now that he's out of prison, because everyone knows the story of Ray Carruth, and this is going to make for a great Dateline NBC special or 2020 something. I think he's doing it. He's broke. I think he wants to get interviews and he wants people to pay him money for it. And what better way to try to soften everyone's heart? Because I'm sure he's still saying that he didn't do it is to try to have a relationship with this child. Even though technically he's not a child, he's 19 years old, but he is mentally retarded. So I'm sure that, the grandparents or someone, they have to make all the decisions for him. If it were me, he would not come anywhere near that baby. Well, so, not that he's not a ba- he's not a baby anymore, but so let me ask you this. I mean, if if I mean the guy goes to prison, the guy pays his debt. If you I mean, do you believe at all in the idea of prison rehabilitation? I do, but so why not why not him? Like what what about him says there's no way he could rehabilitate there's no way he could be a Because he person. tried to kill a pregnant woman, and the woman was pregnant with his kid. I, 18 years ago. I, yes. I, I, I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just saying, if you believe in if you believe in rehabilitation, you know, is it possible that he actually is genuine? Is it possible? I wouldn't take that chance. That's just my personal opinion. I don't think he should have anything to do with the child because, to me, if I'm the grandparent, I've raised this child. My life has been completely turned upside down. You murdered my daughter. Now I'm having to raise this child. You're in prison, and when you get out, you're going to tell me now you want to have a relationship with your son? Fuck you, Ray Caruth. Go sit down somewhere. That's just crazy to me. I, I, I... I don't, I don't get it. I think he's stupid. I think that he's going to end up causing more heartache for that family by c- trying to come into the picture again. No, go, 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 go sit down somewhere um, and try to get your life together. That is not the first thing that you need to do. I think he needs to try to build a relationship with the grandparents. Maybe he can find out some more things about his son, but I don't think that he needs to have a relationship with this kid. Not at all. But okay. that, that's just what I think. So before we go into the break, you know what season it is. It's Halloween season, my favorite part of the year. So tell me what's your favorite part about Halloween, producer James? Uh, watching you decorate everything. <laughs> Seeing how happy you are with Halloween. It That's makes me so, so happy. I mean, I don't think that he gets why people get excited about Halloween. Uh, I think he likes the fact that uh, women dress up as sluts during that day and no one really says anything about it. I think he likes that aspect of it. But it's fun to see kids being kids again and it brings up the inner child of grownups as well. Yeah, oh, I, I love Halloween. Always have. And, and I like and- all the spooky stuff. Well, you like horror movies. You I like love horror stuff. movies. I like scary so, movies, all that good stuff. So speaking of that, if you are not watching The Hunting of Hill House on Netflix, something is seriously wrong with you. You need to go and add that to your queue. I finally said queue, right? I used to always say queuey. 
You used to always say QE. It looks like it's QE. It's Q-U-E, QE. Add that to your Q and watch it. And also, I think in a couple of days, they're going to be premiering on Netflix. Netflix has it going on. They're uh, redoing the Sabrina the Teenage Witch series, and it's going to be a lot darker and um, spookier and not not the, who was the Melissa Joan Hart version of Sabrina the Teenage Witch at all. So, so they're not going to have the little puppet cat anymore? I don't know, but they have to have Salem the cat. Okay. I, I I don't know how they're going to do that, but Netflix can do, I mean, Netflix is producing some great stuff. I mean, I probably watch more shows that are on Netflix, but I always get so mad at myself because the shows are so good and you binge watch and you're like, what I'm supposed to do for the next two and a half years, waiting for the next season of the show to come on. Damn me and my binge watching. So we got a question from our comments. Uh, uh, the house Tiffany on haunted. Says, What's it about? Yeah. So, um, Nicole, the house on haunted hill, not, not haunted hill, the hunting of Hill house. is basically about a family. Um, they have five kids. It's a husband and a wife. And what they do is they buy homes and they renovate them and then they sell them. So, uh, I'm only on episode three, uh, part, no episode four. It's, uh, showing how the, the tragedies that have happened in this house and how this one incident affected all five of these kids and where they are now as adults. Uh, they've got fucked up situations. I think that it's going to be, uh, the backstories are really, really good because you kind of flip from uh, the past when they were living in the house and their parents were renovating it to now how they're all as adults. Like one of them is a mortician. One of them is um, he's a writer. He wrote about the um, whatever happened in the house because we still don't know what happens. All we know is that supposedly the mom committed suicide, but it looks like the house may be possessed or has ghosts or something like that in it. So um it, it is a really good show. There's really good acting in it. Um, so make sure to check that out. Um, and also don't forget, I think I think it's the 26th or the 27th that the new Sabrina series is going to come out. So, alrighty, we will be right back after this commercial break. Femme Fatale is the fully equipped boutique style gym and fitness club that is taking a new and innovative approach to women's health and fitness. Our main goal is to provide a comfortable and completely judgment-free venue for women of all ages and fitness levels to come exercise and feel like a positive fit family. We understand the busy lifestyle of today's women, so we also provide 30 minutes to one hour fitness classes, including the newest trends like boot camps, yoga, and body bar. We also offer a break room for school-aged children to hang out, as well as a tanning bed and sauna. We are located at 689 FM 517 West in Dickinson, Texas, and our phone number is 281-678-8037. Mention the Libra Lounge and get $10 off your initiation fee. We look forward to growing our fit family with you. Hey guys, it's Keisha, the host of the Libra Lounge with Keisha podcast and web series. If you follow me on social media, you know that the Million Harris is one of the sponsors of the show. I've told you all about the great hair products for both men and women that they have, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to actually see some of their hair bundles. Here they are. What I did was I ordered both 20 and 22 inch Malaysian bundles and a frontal from the Million Harris and took them to my stylist and had her make this unit. Yes, this is actually a lace front unit made from the bundles I purchased at the Million Harris. I usually don't wear this much hair extensions, nor do I wear it this long, but I really, really love it. The hair feels amazing. It looks great. I've been getting compliments everywhere that I go. So make sure to go to her website or stop by the shop and get your order on. She's got hair products, bundles, and mink lashes. Make sure to use my discount code LEVER20 for 20% off your total purchase. Your very own Houston Havoc have teamed up with Keisha from the Libra Lounge to present to you the Lady Havoc Dance Team. This is the premier year for the Lady Havoc, and we're excited to offer you a great opportunity to sponsor the team. Call or email today to sign up to sponsor and show your support for the Lady Havoc Dance Team.
Welcome back to the show, everyone. Um, so since we couldn't have Femme Fatale in the studio with us tonight, we will have them next Wednesday, which is Halloween night. You know you ain't got nothing else to do but sit around the house watching scary movies and eating kids candy and stuff like that. So you might as well join us for the show. Um, anywho, so we've got two bitch pleases of this week, and they are both kind of funny. Um, I could, I could really bitch slap both of the people who are going to be awarded the bitch please award for, um, this evening. So roll it. Bitch, please. You be rolling down the street, telling stories, bitch, you never tell the truth. Bitch, please. Everybody know you lying, bitch, cause all you do is lie. Um, hey, Nanette, can you volunteer with the dance team? Are you trying to be a dancer or what you just hit me up and let me know what you're trying to do. They can always use help. If you're interested in being a sponsor for Lady Havoc semi-professional dance team, make sure to send an email to Lady Havoc and that's Havoc with a K dance team at gmail.com. These girls are on fire. Uh, they're cute. They're talented and you, this is going to be a great year for them. Um, all right. So the first person who is getting our bitch please of the week is Megan McCain, who is one of the hosts of the show, The View, which I can't even believe that shit's still on. Like who watches the view? They're not even the hosts are not even that like oh, never mind. Hey, the view, if you're looking for new hosts, <laughs> this girl right here. So today, as everyone knows, um some terrorist uh sent bombs to um a lot of important Democrats, one of two of them being Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Um Trump even made a speech and he kind of sounded like he might be a good president for that few moments. He didn't sound stupid. He, he, he took this very seriously. So, uh, while filming the view today, um, of course this was part of the hot topics and Megan McCain, who, which I usually like Megan cause she's plus size. She's cute. Her dad was, you know, Senator McCain who died of brain cancer not too long ago. But do you know what the, what she said when they brought this up? She said that the Democrats being threatened with these bombs is the same thing as when Republicans go out and they're heckled in public. Damn. Excuse I don't me. know how she's going to clean that one up. That's just pretty bad. It's like, how can you, how can you compare... Someone said, oh, fuck you, you're a Republican, or fuck you, you voted for Trump, versus someone and their family being blown up. I, I don't even know how she got it in her head to make the comparison, but she did, and then she said it. She let the thoughts come out of her mouth in the form of stupidity. Well, you got to remember that her and the left are the same people who say that when you say something insensitive, you have microaggressed me and aggression causes stress, which is equal to violence. So I can be violent back to you. That, that, so I don't, I don't think anybody would be pissed off at her at all on the left. I honestly. think, yeah, on the left, but on the right over here where I'm at, that shit's all kinds of fucked up. You cannot compare someone being called a name in public to someone's life being threatened. And that is why Megan McCain and I, and I hate that the fact that she's one of the, you know, team plus size representatives and she says something so just stupid. Stupid is not even the word for it. Just unbelievable. I'm sure Whoopi Goldberg went all up in her ass after the show. I mean, she had to because um, that that was that was highly inappropriate. I, I I don't get the comparison. And that is the reason why she is getting the bitch please of the week from the Libra Lounge. But she's not the only one. So um, Nilda sent me a video just a little while ago. Uh, she's like, you have to talk about this on your show. And I'm like, well, what is it? She sends me this video clip. And I was totally mind blown at what I saw. So James, can you play a little bit of the audio or am I going to play it? So I think you're going to play it, but... Uh, okay, so I'm going to play a little bit of an uh, the audio because uh, we can't get the video uploaded. 
But it is a young girl. Her name is Treasure. And I'm only going to play like a little bit of the clip. And she was on the Dr. Phil show. And I, I want you guys to hear what she has to say. I know a lot of people take issue with my beliefs. I'm white. I'm a Caucasian because everything about me is different from an African-American. I have naturally straight hair. My hair isn't nappy. It doesn't require weave. My nose is not giant. It's like African-Americans. My lips are perfect. They're not too big and they're not too small. They're just perfect. My ears, I don't have black people ears because they're really giant. Most African-Americans speak ghetto. But when it comes to black people, I think they're all ugly and have nothing in common with them. I'm different from African-Americans because I'm white. My figure is just like Kim Kardashian and she's a wonderful role model. I act and I think like a white person instead of a black person. I believe that I'm completely and um, utterly better than them. Like, we're on two different levels. Like, okay, African-Americans are here. I'm here. White people act and think just way more mature than African-Americans. Black people, they think in a criminal way. When I think about African-Americans, I feel like asking them, what is wrong with them? They're really dangerous. If African-American is on the same street as I am, I'll cross the street to avoid their chaotic, thuggish ways. Are you okay? I'm irritated. I'm sorry. I just know that I'm white. I mean, she might not know that I'm white, but I know that I'm white. I can feel it through my veins. I feel it through my blood. I tell my mom, I'll never be like any of those Negroes. My mom <laughs> tries to criticize me about my supposed race. I tell her she's just ignorant. There's nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. Well, well, well. Miss Treasure, you may not be black, but you are damn sure blind and dumb as fuck. I just, sh I, where do we start? Where do we start with Treasure? Because she has convinced herself that she is white. Reverse Rachel Dozal. Pretty much. And she, I didn't even know black people had I didn't know it was a such thing as black people ears. I didn't know y'all had those weird ears either. I never knew we had black people. Did y'all know we had weird ears? I have never heard that. Turn. I've never heard that. That's a new black one. ears. That's that's a that's a new one right there. Um, this girl thinks that she is aesthetically perfect. I don't know what mirror she's looking in. A white one. I guess so. Yes. So she is going to be on an episode of Dr. Phil. And I tell you, I watched the first few minutes of the interview. I don't think Dr. Phil going to make it the whole hour because this girl is, remember when uh, he had, what's the girl? How about catch me outside? How about that? It's oh. the equivalent of stupidity. Like that was, this is sad right here. This is a sad situation. You know, <laughs> so I'll say this. I, I it's back to the identity thing. Yes, she's right. She does have freedom of speech. She can say whatever the hell she wants to, right, wrong, or indifferent. She has that. She has that right. Right. But when you're at the point of denying reality, right? When you, something we can objectively look at and go, you're black. That's when we're getting into crazy to me. Otherwise, yeah, but it's yes, just a point of view. This I, I, crazy. I, I, I don't think I know that treasure. Her and her stripper name really need to seek the help of a psychiatrist, not a psychologist, not a therapist, not a life coach, a psychiatrist. She needs meds. Because that bitch needs some medicine. Now, I will say that she did, not knowing it, but she did admit that she likes black guys. But here's a, yeah, because she liked the black dick. <laughs> Well, she likes black guys because she said, I think Kim Kardashian is my model. So. Yeah, and, and that's that's sad when you hear that Kim Kardashian is someone's role model. Um, I don't know what happened in this child's life to make her think this way, but she I don't I don't even know if that's denial. That's just crazy talk. And she's not even light skinned. She's like not this. light skinned, I mean, she don't have good hair. She has no European features at all. But even though she tried to describe herself as having European features. Watch okay. I'm going to blow this picture up so you can see it too and our audience can see. Now, 
let's step through and identify. She said her hair black. is straight, like white naturally, people's. Naturally no, it's straight. not. No, because look, look, there's some color right here, and that's not natural. It's, it's not naturally done. straight. It, it's 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 kinky black people's hair that has been flat ironed. And no offense, but she's she said, got big lips. Flat, big lips. Flat she's nose. got the 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 stereotypical black nose. She got her ears covered up because they probably look too much like black people ears. So she keeps those those covered. She is in a lot. Uh, and, a, and a little gap tooth looks like. She, she's looks not like a little gap tooth. tooth. She's a lot gap tooth. But, uh, you know, but I guess that's a white people thing to have gap teeth. I'm joking. You no, know, of course that's not. But this girl, I would like to put her in a room because she's 16, the same age as my daughter. I would love to put the two of them in a room together and see what she had to say when she walked out. You know, that's scary because she might actually sway Skylar. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Skylar's so pro-black, it's not even funny. I'm like, I don't even think she realized she's light-skinned. So now like, I'm offended because she is appropriating from my culture, from my white culture. Yeah, now technically you could say that. But then I'm no offended. one would listen to you because people say you can't culturally appropriate white people. Of course. And being a white male, of course, I can't talk about anything. No, you can't. Is, no, we yeah. would shut you down, protest, not eat at your restaurant, uh, burn a cross in your yard. We do. I'm just kidding. But no, no you, you, you can't because they would call that revictimization, and we're not going to do that. But treasure, I know you're 16, but your ass gets the bitch please of the week from the Libra lounge. Okay. Make sure to go check out the goings on that femme fatale because they're having their wicked workout open gym this Saturday. Go to the femme fatale Facebook page to get additional information on that. We will see you all on Wednesday, which is Halloween night with our guests, Jenny Flynn and the trainers from femme fatale. Be careful out there. If you're anywhere in the Houston Galveston counties, because it's just nasty out there and I'm tired of the rain. Thank you, producer James for being my, co-host this evening no problem and black folks do not dress in white face i'm gonna be offended mm, he gonna sue y'all we'll see y'all next week